Hey subscribers, welcome back to another Practice Problems for Beginners series video. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe because we have a ton more videos coming in the future. In this practice problem, we plan to show you how to loop over a 2D array and sum up all of the ones that are in that 2D array. And if you don't know what a 2D array is, hopefully you know what an array is, but it's just an array that's nested inside of an array. And this is really useful if you're dealing with like any type of grid, like a 2D grid that could be um, a Minesweeper, right? Think about Minesweeper. You have a 2D grid of things and you need to loop through it and do something with every element. And this can also be really useful for any type of image processing because how is an image structured in code? Well, it's a 2D array of pixels, right? You have a bunch of columns and a bunch of rows. So this is a great problem. Let's just go ahead and dive into the code right now and figure out how to sum up all the ones in a 2D array. So what is a 2D array? If you wanted to visualize this on paper, right? Just draw out a grid or a matrix with a bunch of little squares in it and every, inside every square, put a number, put a zero or put a one. The problem we're trying to solve is how do you sum up all the ones that are in that 2D array or that grid? So on paper, what you do is you probably start at the top left corner and then you go left to right and look at every cell of that grid. And then every time you find a one, you might have a calculator, you might have a tally up above, where if you find a one, you put a checkbox, or you put, a, you put one tally. Keep going, you find another one, you put a tally for two. When you get to the end of that row, then you go back to the very first column of the next row. So you're going like this, you know, left to right, boom, you got to the end. You go back, left to right, boom. Just like if you're writing a paper on Word or something, right? You, you search left to right. And that is how we're gonna solve this problem in JavaScript. We're gonna start at the top left corner, left to right, sum up everything, and then do it again and do it again and do it again. So let's just start off with what is a 2D array? How do you declare a 2D array in JavaScript if you don't already know? Well, I could just make a constant called numbers, and that is equal to an array. And hopefully you know what an array is. Basically, it's just a collection of numbers or objects or things. And inside of this array, what I'm going to do is have every row be equal to yet another array. So I could say, um, let's just give it three rows. So to visualize this, what we're doing here, I'll just give it 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. And um, I'll just give it 0, 0, 1. All right, so this is pretty much, if you were to draw this out on paper, this would be your first cell in the top left corner, followed by 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. I hope this makes sense. Um, what we need to do now, like I said in the algorithm on paper, is you start in the top left corner, and if you know how to access indices in an array, the very first index is going to be index 0, which would be this, right? This is your first row. So just to kind of um, visualize that, numbers of zero is going to be equal to this row here. Let me just print that out. And then let's just kind of visualize it a little bit more just so we don't start diving in the code without understanding what's going on behind the scenes. Numbers of zero is that first row. Numbers of one is that second row. And numbers of two is that third row. So now we need to like we figured out how to loop through the rows, right? We just increment numbers, zero, one, and two. Now we need to increment through the columns, right, of this row. Well, hopefully you know how to do a, an iteration over an array because we just did it. But if you wanted to get, let's say, this number one here, what you can do is put a bracket one in bracket here. And that's how you access this value right here. Let me just get rid of this. If you want to access, let's say, the third value of the second row, you could just say index of 2, which will give you this one right here, the very last value. And then finally, if you want to access, let's say, the first value of that last row, you just do index 2 and index 0, which will give you this value, the first 0, and I can clear that out. So now we know how to loop through the rows. And then also for each row, we know how to loop through the columns of that row. Now we need to kind of talk about how do you keep track of a running sum, right? 
Well, we can use a dynamic variable with let. So I'm going to say like let sum is equal to zero. So let's just go ahead and start looping through the rows, right? I'm going to do a for loop here. And I'm going to do a traditional for loop where you have the, you know, the three segments. So I'm going to say let i equal to zero. In fact, instead of i, let's just call this row index. And then while row index is less than numbers of length, which will give us the full length, which is three. And then we just increment row index every single time. So if you're familiar with looping, this is how you do a traditional loop where you loop from zero to two, including two. Now to do a 2D loop, we just basically loop again, right? We loop over, let call index, column stand, or call stands for column, equal to zero, call index is less than numbers of row index, and then column index plus plus. All right, so we loop through the rows on this first loop, and then we loop through the columns of this second loop. And one thing we can do this to kind of make this easier to understand is I'm going to pull out this value to row and put that here. It needs to be length. I forgot to add length. All right, so now we got the row, and now we are looping through the columns. And what we need to do is sum up all the ones, right? So what we basically write is sum, we could do sum plus equals to the value of that, which I think will be a good approach because sometimes you actually need the value. So what I'm going to do is say const number is equal to row of call index. So this will give us the individual numbers, right? This will give us either 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, or 1. Now what I said is I want to check if it's 1, then I need to increment the sum. So if number is equal to 1, then sum plus plus. Let's just print out that sum. And I have a auto formatter on, so when I saved it, just formatted everything to make it look a little better. All right, so there we have it. We have a loop that's looping through all the rows. For every row, we loop through the columns. For every element, we check if it's one. If it is, we sum it up. So let's step through this with the debugger. And in fact, let me just run this real quick just to make sure we did not mess anything up. So debug with node. Give this a second to load up. Let me load up my debug console down here. And if I click step, it printed out four. So let's go back and verify that. We have one, two, three, four ones. Our program works as expected. So let me add a line break here. And let me stop this debugger. And let me do it again. Now before we start stepping through code, let me just print out a couple of watch values. It'd be nice to see what numbers is. It'd be nice to see what sum is. It'd be nice to see what row is. And it'd be nice to see what number is, I think. So stepping through, numbers is going to be set to that 2D array of three rows and three columns. And then we define sum and let it equal to one. And then we get to the for loop and we start looping through the rows. So row index is going to be equal to zero. You know what, let me just print this out too, just in case it helps visualize anything. We say is two less than three. It is, so we're going to keep looping. And then we grab the first row. So you can see here the row was equal to 0, 1, and 1. Up here we have 0, 1, and 1. And then we increment a column index, which I should probably also add a watch there. Check if the column index is less than row.length. Row.length happens to be 3, so it is. And then we grab the number. Number was 0, because that is the first element of the first row. And we say, if that number is one, we increment sum, which it isn't. So let's just step through again. And then basically, basically we keep looping through the column, right? So we're at number of one. If it's equal to one, we add, add the sum. So you see up here, sum became one, pretty straightforward. Let's just step through this. And we're gonna do it again, because there is another number one in the row. And finally, we're gonna break out of that nested loop and go back to the original loop. Row index is going to become 1, and then we're going to look at row of index 1, which is 1, 0, 0, which is this one. And at this point, you can feel free to step through this uh, on your own, but eventually it's going to loop through everything, sum up all the ones, and print out your answer down here. 
right? So pretty, I hope this was uh, easy to understand. And again, this might take some playing around with if you haven't seen a nested double loop before, but let me, again, let me just talk about how important this is, right? So there's other instances where you want to loop through a 2D array. Let's say it's an image on a screen and you're trying to find a particular like highest pixel intensity, right? So you could do a find the minimum value inside a 2D array using this approach. You could do some type of like image processing where you need to run a window over that 2D array, which is kind of even more. I think that's like a for loop, for loops nested inside each other. But just know there is a lot of stuff you can do with 2D, 2D arrays. So be sure you kind of understand this. All right, that wraps up this tutorial. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe right now. Please help me out and give us a like. And then also in the comments, you feel free to suggest any more videos that you might want to see in the future for practicing your JavaScript skills. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cody Seibert and happy coding.